that there are a huge number of very influential and very talented Oklahomans that worked in comic books, comic strips, and graphic novels. Some of them even also worked in animation. I would have to say that the most famous and most influential of them all was Chester Gould. Well, there was nothing like it in comics, and so uh, it didn't take long for it to capture the public imagination. Uh, crime was rampant in, throughout the 20s and into the early 30s, and uh, Chicago was known for criminal activity. And so uh, Gould created a, a character uh, who was an honest, uh, upright, uh, incorruptible uh, cop who uh, stood up to gang bosses and corrupt politicians and uh, was just a righteous guy. That was always an interesting strip because it was way ahead of its time as far as crime fighting and investigation. And he was ahead of the police in a lot of things uh, as far as uh, techniques. I mean, he was, he was really a, a smart writer. It had a gigantic impact. It was read probably at its height by about 200 million people a day. The thing about the Dick Tracy strip was uh, the wonderful uh, rogues gallery of villains Dick Tracy had. Uh, uh, BBI, eyes, flat top, prune face. And uh, at the time, I really liked Batman. And I always felt that uh, Chester Gould's villains influenced the Batman villains because Batman had a similar, what I felt, the comparable rugs gallery to the Dick Tracy, so. On the Sunday page, after a day's worth of writing, he said, I want an actual machine gun, uh, an accurate machine gun drawing in the last panel. And I said, okay, I'll do some research. I'll go to the library and get a picture of it. He said, you don't have to. He says, up on the back shelf in the, in the closet, the coat closet, there's a machine gun. Take it home and use it for a model. I said, okay, and he left for, the, for his train. So I got a stool, stepped up on it, felt way back in the shelf the closet. Sure enough, there's a, a Tommy gun back there, a, a real one. I'm not kidding, it was a real one. It had, it had a little tag and trigger guard. It says, property of Chicago Police Department. So I wrapped it up in brown paper, got my briefcase with my artwork, stuck the machine gun under my arm and started to walk toward Union Station, which I usually walk from the Tribune Tower to Union Station. It was exactly one mile. And I walk out the front door and I heard somebody say, Sir, could we speak to you for a minute? And I didn't know whether it was me they were talking to. So I kept right on walking. Finally, there's a gentle hand on my shoulder that says, Sir, we'd like to talk to you for a minute. I said, I'm going to be late for my train, officer. He says, No, don't worry about that. We just want to spend a minute with you. He said, Would you step into the backseat of the police car? So I, I sat down and I thought, Oh boy, if they find out what I got in this brown paper, I'm going to be in big, big trouble. <clears throat> and he says, what do you got in the paper? I said, leftover pizza. He says, let me see the pizza. And I said, officer, you're not going to believe this, but I got a story to tell you how I got this. He says, don't bother. He says, Chester Gould called us and told us to give you a ride to the station. <laughs> he scared the hell out of me. To get even. I got to work about 15 minutes before he did, and I bought a little wrench with me, and I unscrewed the, the, the bolt under the drawing board and lowered it a quarter of an inch every Monday. And it took about three months, and it was down about that far. And he's working down here like that, and all of a sudden he stops and he looks up and he says, you got even with me, didn't you? Chester Gould, you know, he was way ahead of his time. Uh, Dick Tracy has some really wild stuff, so love that stuff. Dick Tracy was one of the first really extremely merchandised comic books. My gosh, there isn't anything that at one time or another didn't have a Dick Tracy face stamped on it. Books and games and movies and television shows and records, anything that you can name at one time probably had a Dick Tracy face on it at its height. Hugely, hugely influential. And of all the people who have worked in comics, I would have to say that as far as Oklahomans are concerned, Dick Tracy is our big guy.